You might be able to say that the road to perfection is identical to the road to self-torture. I'm happy with this. Look what I saved from the excavators at the scrapyard. Only three bucks for that. Now, normally I would have I would keep that like it is because that'd be the best example of one I have. However, I happen to have a really nice one that I paid like 40 bucks for. And this one is in almost what I would consider perfect condition. It's not brand new looking. It's not abandoned looking. It's weathered. And this one has little marks and scuffs that really give it character. However, this one looks like it was lost in the forest for 20 years. Well, maybe not 20 years, but maybe 10 years. And so I'm thinking, I won't feel bad about cleaning this one up. Let me replace the strap, but the inner straps are fine. I'll drill the rivets and use pop rivets to put them back in, but I want to wash these and make sure that these are fine. And I'm going to paint this red, and this is going to be my helmet for whenever I'm doing rocketry experiments, because I want to have a neat civil defense red helmet with my with my uh, space program logo on the front, which I already have a name picked out. I just need to make a, a logo before I really announce it. I even have a web website all set up. But I recently got some gloss regal red enamel paint and I'm really falling in love with this enamel paint. And yes, this is just an excuse for me to finally use that stuff. Which, I say that as if I've had it for a long time, but I've had it for all but 30 minutes. And so, let's clean this up. We'll keep all the scratches where the excavator tried to nibble on it. I ran over and like signaled to the guy like stop stop and I, I picked it up and then like as soon as I, I ran away he went back to work and he just dumped a whole bunch of like, washing machines and stuff right where it was. So this thing would have been flattened if I hadn't have grabbed it. And so that little mark there we can keep that. Gives us some history. But this paint is chipping off really bad. So again it's in, in need of restoration. Perfect. Yeah, see, I can clean these up now and I'll put some WD 40 on them so they won't rust. You know, it might be better for me just to go ahead and grind those off with the grinder. That might be the only option. Oh, by the way, there's the insignia, the information.
Maybe I should build a parts cleaner sometime. All right, so I'm gonna paint it without painting the center. And then I'll flip it upside down. And then can paint the outside. And then later I'll go over and paint the inside again. And that will be two coats on the inside. And then I'll probably put two or three coats on the outside. And then I'll let it sit for like five minutes for the stuff to drip off the pan, uh, the top cap, and so it doesn't make a mess when I open it. So it's at the top. Never mind, I'm an idiot. But anyway, this will be for my my paintbrushes. Look at that. Perfect. Oof. Acetone is cold. Quite cold. This is a cheaper brush than before, so it's yeah, maybe not the best for this, but oh well. This one seems to work better. And the bristles are all the same length, so that's maybe why. Yeah, I don't know if this is a good idea or not. brush again it's nice and soft again once I've cleaned it oh okay that's definitely a different consistency let's see if it sticks together it does ah oh, so does temperature that's good The, the smell is also different. It smells right now. Compared to what I had before, it's much better. So we're doing this outside. Hopefully the sun will help this work better. The top isn't going too bad. I'm having to sand it because there's a lot of little specks, little flakes from the other brush. Little bits of dried black paint from the first time I used it. But I found that a little flea brush gets all that out, so that's good. I can use the new brush though, because now I cut it to, to so it's straight. Otherwise, it's very uneven, so it should go better now. And I put my paint next to our space heater inside, so that should be good. Now, I'm just trying to get all these little specks of black stuff off there. It might, it might just be stuff from the workshop, really. And I'll also get off any places where the paint dripped. It's weird how it is seem to pop up all of a sudden. They are quite annoying. Because they're like, well, they, they might just be parts of the brush. I might have just reused these brushes too many times. They aren't meant to be used very often after all. Just fucking up even worse. Well, I don't know what to think of that. Looks awful. Piece of shit.
I'm gonna see if the issue is just is too thick. So. I have acetone that I've been using. I have this. This is my pipette. There, we're getting it. That's perfect. But it still has those long gashes where the paint just won't stick. I'll see if I have red spray paint. Oh. That's really bad. So I waited a few days and it's about 60 degrees outside. However, in here, it's like 95. It's 37.8 degrees Celsius in my little, well, I use it for storage, but it's a little green tarp shed for a greenhouse, and so it gets really toasty in here. I'm thinking that up until now, 10 to 10 to 20 degrees Celsius has done fine because I've been doing things like cast iron. Like for instance, whenever I do this printing press, it doesn't have perfectly smooth edges, and so all these little pits and stuff it can be a little, little bit off for the paint and it'll still look perfectly fine. But with something that's so smooth like this, it just, oh my God, that's hot. It just, it needs to have a good finish. However, that one coat of paint did turn out fairly well. There was two issues. One, the streaks. It still, it has still made streaks and it didn't like gloss over. And then also it had a lot of little specks which I've picked out which those are from the brush. I still needed to clean the brush. I've worked on the brush a lot more. I don't feel like buying another one, especially whenever this one seems good enough. And it was it was from that first time I used enamel paint. There was still a few little granules of black paint in there and I washed it about four times in acetone. I took a wire brush and scrubbed it really hard and now I can't find any little specks of dried paint in there. It feels brand new. I love it. So we'll try that again. Oh, and yes, I know, like those lines going radially, those are actually from the stamping markings. Those are in the metal. And what I'm talking about is the ones going in that direction that are the actual from like the brushes because where the brush bristles went, it just didn't seal back up and make a nice flat surface. So I'm hoping that this time with it being warmer, the, um, the paint will cover the surface a lot more smoothly. And that'll be good. You might be able to say that the road to perfection is identical to the road to self-torture. All right, it's 41 degrees in here now, Celsius. So I. I uh, open the other zip tie or the zipper, so it's hopefully not going to get too much hotter because that's a bit, a bit extreme. And I'm deciding to use that for a holder now. That'd be nice. The 
anything better. It's looking much better. And I'm not, and I'm not even finished with this side yet. Well, everyone, I'm quite happy with how that turned out, but it's not perfect. Need another coat and some refinements. I think that that temperature was too hot, and so it was drying sooner than I could actually put it down and like fully work over because I was expecting to get it all down and then brush it over, and then that would be the, the final bit. But by that time, it was already sticky and tacky, and you know, when I did that, it would make runs. I was able to do that a little bit by adding more, but then I made some drips on the sides. So, I'm going to take some of these runs. I'm going to just sand it a tiny little bit. So the second coat doesn't have to work with some really terrible things. Now there's some really bad runs, and I just dabbed them out with um, a little towel. And that seemed to work pretty well. It just made like a little void. Oh, and I also bought a really fancy little brush. I believe it's a Worcester. It's a soft dip. That's what it's called. I didn't check if it was a Worcester or not. But this one seemed soft before. But now after filling that one, it is actually quite, quite softer. So I'm hoping this will be good for things like cast iron that have a lot of dimples in them. And it, you won't notice if there's some streaks. And then this will be much better for things like this that you'll notice even a little, a little ripple in. Whew. There we go. I'll let that sit for a few minutes. It'll give me time to get my now two-stage brush cleaning bottles ready. I realized no sense in having one stage whenever two stage is better for this sort of thing. Whenever I'm just doing the crappy stuff and I won't mind doing less but oh well my mom found this container for me and it just barely sits over it so actually you know what it's not as big as I thought it was I might not need that on it perfect oh look at that And I'll also work on just half of the helmet at a time, really. So hopefully that can help it. Mm. The question is to add any more or not? I say let's not. Let's see what will happen and give it some patience and see what happens. Oops, lost control there. Yeah, that's that part that I had to go over before. Now I don't touch it. I'm just not even going to look at it. I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to let it sit there and look beautiful. Everything's going to be okay. I'm not sure on how much space I have on the back, so it's just going to be leaning up against it like that. I found this little flea brush made in England that I got as a kid for our dog. Works great for this. Sometimes I can get a little little clumps of dried paint out. And I keep finding ones in the trash that are like this. Has a lot of like stuff in it. But I've been slowly cleaning it up. Before it was just like rock hard like a board. But now it's it's coming along. Even though it's all like varnish up inside of it. It's been five days of drying and not very warm temperatures. So I wanted to give it that extra time to do that. And I am so happy with this. Yep, it's nice and hard. It'll take a few more weeks to dry though. Now I did accidentally forget to do 
paint all the way down to the edges so I think we will touch up the edges there like look at that like that looks pretty good for for paintbrush and um, a little bit there a little bit there a little bit up there I just didn't get enough paint to the edge because I was so focused on this and that's fine I'm totally fine with that there's no runs so it looks like that temperature was pretty good. And then I think we can just, we can uh, zap those with a little bit of paint and then put it upside down. Now it's 31.8 degrees Celsius in here and going down. So that's good. It's about the temperature I wish. I can have a hard time seeing where that spot was now. This is thicker. It's good enough for me. Now as for the, in, the inside, you know, I'm just going to do one coat. That'll be enough for me. There is white paint in there. good enough for me. It's been about four days and should be good enough. We didn't make a mark on this. Eh, did a little bit but I could use my buffing wheel for that. I will need to I guess because some dripped over to the side. That is unfortunate but the top is nice and hard now. The bottom, could use another layer, I think. Let us see if we can hurry up and get this last coat done. And I'll let it sit for a week to really harden up really well. And we can use my buffing wheel to clean it up, maybe. But I, I definitely won't be trying to get a too nice of a finish for this. I mean, I'll try for a good one, but doesn't have to be perfect. You know what? I should sand it. Played around with it for a little bit. That actually does work a little bit. I just, uh, I noticed the metal is getting a bit warm, so I don't want to overheat it because I imagine the paint wouldn't go very well then. But I sanded some parts that had some brush strokes and then I buffed it out and it's definitely glossier now. In this instance, it helps to have a helmet together and these little buttons are really difficult so I'm going to push them in with a, with a pair of pliers and hopefully they'll never need to come back out. Alright, I'm going to waste one of these just so I know what exactly it looks like because I've never actually used a popper of it before and it's always best to go ahead and test. Okay. So I'll probably go in from this side. That'll be good.
I do fear that doesn't go in far enough. Yep, unfortunately. That was wise for me to do this on the outside too. It's easier to drill through. It seems you adjust the, the chuck with that. So let's try this. Aha, let's not do the same mistake. Let's do the side. So unfortunately, I scuffed up the helmet and it's not big enough. Oh, well, that's not good. Or it's that rivet gun. It popped before it was fully in, and it was then loose. So, oh. so that's like a month and a half down the drain. Piece of shit! God damn it! So. I'm tired of this goddamn bullshit. Fuck sake. Nah, it's just not even gonna work. It's like trying to drill through a ball bearing. There we go. What a fucking waste of goddamn time. Fucking waste of time. It's not even sticking to the brush. Oh, and look at it being this time, it'll probably be just a perfect little, little covering. Finish, whatever you call it. The next day, and I got a selection of steel and aluminium rivets. I'm going to go with the aluminium because it's easier to drill those out. No. This doesn't actually have measurements on it. But I think that would be the right one. Alright. That was pretty good. A little bit lopsided, but oh well. I keep scraping it. It's amazing what the right pop rivet will do. And there we have it. Now small. Looks like these ropes were tied or um, eaten by rats, so I'm just going to cut them. Strange how that's just not like this. I finally got it to work. This rope might need to be replaced. It's a bit hard. Something made of cotton would be good. I'll see about making a new strap. My mother has all the things for that, so that's no worry. There we have it. That's a nice helmet. 
I might make it to where it goes down lower. I'm happy with this. As opposed to this. So I'm really happy with that. Although, kind of not. I'm just happy it's over and I can get this video out because this was almost like self-torture. It sucked. It's been like a month and a half on this damn hat, helmet, and it didn't turn out very good. It's all marred and scuffed up and the pop rivets had issues, everything had issues. The paint chips off on the inside. The paint on the outside still kind of, you can scratch it off with your fingernails. It'll take months for the enamel paint to dry. But it's done. It's done enough to where I get sick thinking about doing any more, trying to make it any better. Maybe that's why they went with like a static cling uh, paint for the other one. And maybe brushing isn't the best idea. But who knows? It's good to learn. At the very least, I'm I'm much better at getting a nice glossy finish with the paintbrush now. Because I know it's about the temperature and it's about a lot of other things, but primarily the temperature. And also it's good to have multiple temperatures. Start off with the paint really hot, paint it in a medium temperature, and then immediately put it into a cool temperature. So it starts off really liquidy, and then whenever you apply it, it doesn't dry up too quickly so you have time to work with it. And then put it in a, in a cold place so it has a longer time to finish settling into a nice glossy finish. At least that's what I find seems to work. And now this can be my, my helmet for whenever I'm doing fun explosion-y things like rockets or having a big bonfire or, or whatever. Or I could also use it for if I'm cutting down trees. It's probably helpful. Maybe get a face shield for it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. See ya.